Hey everybody, welcome to another Arkham Horror List video. This is a very highly requested video, but we don't play a lot of solo Arkham. I've played a few. It's disclaimer time. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. used to play a lot of solo back when the game first came out, but not so much now. Yeah, I remember like back when we first started, you were like, Roland Banks, untouchable. <laughs> and oh yeah, compared to the other, like Roland Banks and Wendy, you're just like, no. Oh. Yeah. Um, but so we actually had a pretty rigorous system. We had a, a good conversation about it. And these who we think are the top five strongest solo investigators. We have a bunch of honorable mentions as well. And the groups are kind of, uh, some of the numbers are kind of split into multiple groups because they kind of fill a similar niche. When we get to them, we'll explain why we think they're good at solo. Uh, however, we're not saying that this is like the Definitive list. by any stretch. But this is who we think are the strongest solo investigators, and we will show our work and explain why. Yes. Number five, we have none other than Sexy Mark Harrigan. Every list, baby. Every video. Got to talk about Mark at least once. Yeah. No, he's actually, like, really good, though. <laughs> um, the five punt. So the biggest criteria that we looked at for, like, solo play is you have to be able to get clues. If you can't get clues, you will lose every scenario. Yep. It's just, that's just how the game be. And the other option is, or the other thing is, you gotta be able to deal with monsters mm -hmm. in some capacity. Uh, if you don't, they will just kill you. So that capacity could be yeah. killing them first. It could be just evading them. You know? But Mark Harrigan, he uh, kind of does it all a little bit. Five punch means monsters are and the guardian typing, coloring, whatever you want to call it. Monsters aren't going to be an issue. Yeah, he has monsters and, solved. Absolutely. And then uh, cards such as evidence and um, scene of the crime in guard in blue, and then also his or Sophie's ability to ding him for damage to buff up one of his skills in conjunction with cards like flashlight and. Yeah. Like, I guess, perception, if you're really on about that. But, like, getting clues shouldn't be too difficult for him. But just his ability to soldier through <laughs> anything the game friends him with is uh, kind of what earned him this place on the list. This is my contribution. That's why I, I have so much to say about it. But Yeah. Um, so another similar investigator to this is was Zoe. She gets an honorable mention here. Uh, Travis had an excellent point. She's able to tap into Sixth Sense, um, which allows her with her four brain to grab clues as well. And then if there's Shroud that she can't beat, she has access to those blue cards that Travis mentioned from Mark Harrigan. Uh, there's also as well as cards like Drawn to the Flame. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's like Drawn to the Flame or Working a Hunch. Yeah, and yeah, then there's cool also um, Brenna said like in the new starter decks that came out, there's the upgraded evidence. Is that correct? Man, it's yeah, so that card. Good. It yeah. turns out I read it and I was like, damn. <laughs> so like yeah, that's it, also it, further helps Mark Harrigan here like and, and like it, it yeah. pushes I think those are the only two blue characters on our list um, we'll be talking about the invest cards and investor deck at least for one other investor on this list I think but uh, mm -hmm. we are also a little bit unfamiliar with them as they came up this week and none of us have had the opportunity to play with them too much yeah if at all but so. man just like on stat wise as well Mark's Harrigan's five punch means that like that's just something you don't need to worry about and then you can and use three that three foot yeah, and you can use that stat to defeat other problem, like to solve your clue problem as well, which means he's very good at that. Um, See, yeah. Plus, uh, playing solo on the hunt goes from being a very medium defensive card to an incredible card. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Where you're like, what did the game do this turn? It's a rat. That's mm -hmm. what the game did this turn. Yeah, uh, it's a rat. I'll shoot him and take a clue. Yeah. Or like, it's cultist, basic acolyte. Yeah, and then that's nothing to worry yeah. about. You just yeah. you just brush off the phase that's supposed to scare you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, number four, uh, Skids O'Toole is trying to show up. I've always hated that he's just kind of here on this card. You can see him faintly just being like, hey, don't worry me, Skids here. Skids, you're not number four. Wow. Number four I is William that. Yorick. Yeah, uh, when, I, when I play solo, I pretty much always play Will Yorick. Exclusively. Uh, which started out as a joke because one of my friends said that I looked like Will Yorick. You do. You do. Uh, Several of your friends yeah. told you you look like Will yeah, Yorick. Yeah. It's not, it's not like a one-time thing. It makes you feel better. Your beard's nicer than his. That's true. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I don't. I don't have a beard right now. What the fuck? Yeah, I know, right? I think uh, I've seen you have a beard like once in the like ten years I've known you. Eleven years I've known you. I met you when I was in grade nine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so for me, yeah. Will York got a lot of uh, votes in mind. I think I would like give him an eight, eight point five. Um, he has a lot of strength in the fact that like he has access to some good red cards that get clues, uh, like uh, Gravedigger Shovel, which he's holding in his picture, uh, the old Key Ring, which is in the starter decks that are coming out. Yeah. Uh, in addition, uh-huh. he has access to things like uh, Leather Coat and uh, Cherish Keepsake if need be to ensure that he'll just never die. Mysterious uh, Raven from the new Star Deck is also very strong. Those Star Deck cards that I was not super aware of before really... Uh, yeah, they, despite they having never played, played William York, they, they were what kind of really... Britain alerting me to them is what really gave yeah. me the... The number that I get. Yeah, like it's so. usually usually the part you struggle with is like, how do I discard my flashlight? I haven't found an act of desperation or something to punch with an act of desperation, but the old key ring just does it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's something we talked about in our so, William York reviews. Yeah. I don't remember exactly which video it was, but we were like, the thing that really holds him down is his difficulty in getting clues, and the star deck really kind of shores that up. For yeah, him, it so. kind of it kind of just fixes that that problem. Yeah, doesn't uh, make it negligible, and, but like it's it's still like. Some you yeah. have to consider, but it's definitely much easier now. Yeah, and like uh, like the Mark Harrigan, Mark Harrigan before him, uh, not the Mark Harrigan, although I guess he is singular. Uh, he, he is can, the he Mark Harrigan. Kinda, yeah, he's <laughs> the Mark Harrigan now. He can kind of just shrug monsters off. Yes. But uh, like Justin was yeah. saying, with Leather Coat and Cherish Keepsake, you can shrug off most cards. Yeah, the four, the not, four uh, punches, not the like... Worst. It's like okay, but you yeah. definitely have the cards. Yeah. To make up there for definitely it. is yeah, a the difference. The main between issue the four is finding clues and, and five. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, William York's newest weakness is that he's red, <laughs> and he gets to play. Yeah. Red cards good, mm-hmm. which like you would rather yeah, be able to getting... play like any other color good, and then yeah. red zero to two. Yeah, like red red zero to five is like red zero to three. Let's be real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, is is red zero to five now? It is. It is. York probably doesn't want that card, yeah. but like, York's also possibly the uh, like the best user of on the hunt, where you're like, what did the game do with its turn? It gave me another cherished keepsake. That's what. Awesome. Brent, how, Brent, how hyped do you play York with chainsaw? Yeah, no, the chainsaw that costs four. Holy, sick. my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh baby. All right, let's go to our number three. I couldn't yeah. find anyone else like Will York on our list, so I'm just going to keep going. Number yeah. three. So, little head. Luke Robinson. This is so many people. But Luke Robinson represents two other investigators who, as well, who we feel like uh, follow a similar uh, kind of game plan that Travis described at the beginning, where you need to be able to uh, either kill or run away from monsters and get clues. Uh, these three are very good at getting clues and also very good at running away from monsters. Uh, Luke, we thought, was the best of this group, then Finn, and then Ursula Downs. So they're all kind of connected in this group. Yeah, they so might, they might away, do it with very different cards, but they're all playing the same kind of game. Absolutely. You talk about like the hierarchy there. Luke wins out because like Ursula is the best game clues because she's yellow. Mm-hmm. Finn is the best at running away from monsters because he is green. Kind of. Luke is the best, gets the best of both worlds because he gets yellow cards like Deduction and Working a Hunch to get suck up those clues for free. He also gets purple cards like um, Drawn to the Flame and the event from the Dream Eater cycle that lets you add your brain to your book and get an extra clue when read you play it. Yeah, read the signs. Yeah. Six, and then he also gets cards like Six Cents and Right of uh, Right of Seeking. Yeah, in addition oh, to having no. uh, having like purple cards that you can use to do damage to things. I, yeah, like I, he just gets the insane purple cards as well yeah. as protection, like deny existence and war protection. And he can, when it comes to evading enemies, he can use his gate box to just leave. That's that's for me what made Luke the number one choice for me is because he has a un, a, a no test panic button that he can press. 
and then use that location to grab clues from anywhere on the board. His movement I've, is just unparalleled compared to the other yeah, two. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Also, he has four brain to Finn's one. One. Yeah. And if you've yeah. watched any of other videos, the game primarily attacks you through the brain stat with the treachery cards in the Mythos deck. Yeah. So having good brain with cards such as Guts is very good for avoiding those negative consequences. A big thing with Finn is that you're kind of like really banking on like your other teammates to stop things with water protections or for you handle this one right and yeah. you can't do yeah, that you, in solo you get to you get to smoke a cigarillo and yeah. watch them deal with the the brain test like outside of that Stin, right. finn's stat line is incredible but his and yeah. the free evade is nice but luke robinson just beats him in this tier yeah yeah uh, I mean, like, don't, don't, that doesn't mean finn's a bad investor by any stretch he is still very very good yeah, yeah you one can, thing you can do you with uh, you can do with Finn is buy the the whiskey, the Tennessee sour mash, because the green one gives you two uses of plus three brain to a treachery test, mm -hmm. which lets you test at a very respectable four. Yeah, and then if you have skill cards, you can almost certainly pass most of them. And I mean, he also does get access to Lucky too to help him with some of mm -hmm. those brain things, and then also like he can get uh, some. He, he he doesn't need to grab the yellow things that he clues. Like he can just focus on survival yeah. through survivor if he needs to but the big difference in those brain tests between luke and finn i think is that like luke gets to pass them yeah. gets to focus on spank cards to pass them whereas finn you're like i'm going to fail yes. i need to commit i need to be spending my cards on mitigating the results of those failures yeah. which oh, is yeah. much more difficult because they're a lot more varied than just like me press brain test and it's kind of also like a thing too like where it's like the cards that like ev all the other cards in the treasure in the mythos deck finn doesn't care about but those brains will hurt him like wait they'll crush him yeah they'll drag you down you get frozen for you're like Ugh. yeah oh my god yeah <laughs> all right let's go to number two which is it's another group but we think uh we'll talk about them both our figurehead for that group though is ashcan pete alongside patrice is duke. the figurehead is duke yeah duke the dog <laughs> Quiet, I mean, Duke the dog is the reason that Pete is even here. It's the reason he edges out Patrice yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. these are like both looking at their sort of quote unquote desperate builds where you try to take brain damage as early as you can to abuse the skills from the Path of Carcosa expansion that provide four of a skill thing. Ash Camp Pete does this by having five brain and taking yeah, brain damage. Yeah. And Patrice does this by taking two copies of Arcane Research to ding her brain. <laughs> she too. can't ever use. Yeah, and then, uh, well, I mean, you can use them. You just, like, don't <laughs> sometimes. They can use them for other things, but anyway. Uh, and then that plus uh, St. Hubert's Key puts you to the necessary level while also giving you stats that you desperately want mm -hmm. desperately yeah and then you just, you just pass <laughs> tests <laughs> uh these these characters they're just they're just good from zero experience they don't require experience yeah. to be good it's always uh, you just cruise start cruising through scenarios from level zero um whenever uh whenever travis and i would play uh play campaigns there was always uh always like an unspoken agreement that we were gonna leave like the level zero red stuff like lucky and whatnot in the collection by halfway through and if somebody died they were just gonna play desperate pete i mean that was back when i played with one connect yeah like, yeah like we, at, at yeah, that yeah. time we were playing with a single collection so yeah, yeah. And it was entirely unspoken we spoke about it yeah. once and then yeah, we like were like one, yes, one that's time when <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh, I think I might die here. Like, yeah, well, I guess that's the that's the plan, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be Duke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for me, the reason why Ashcan is above Patrice is just because uh, Patrice is kind of sometimes you can just draw the wrong side of your deck, um, but the desperation build is very strong and fun to play, and mm -hmm. when it hits, it hits like really hard. Also, Pete's oh, yeah. engine is online from turn one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where you just you just have Duke, and also like let's let's be real like with Duke the, the the in solo especially the move and investigate is very good. Yeah, like, it's pretty huge. Also good. having a having like a weapon that deals one extra damage if you needed to. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so Patrice we... was higher. I, I voted for Patrice over Duke personally, but that it's partially because that's the one that I've actually played, but also I I think I value cards like Deny Existence and Ward of Protection a little bit higher than uh, these other two guys, as well as cards like Drawn to the Flame. But Ash can Pete can run those. Yeah, but he only gets five of them. He can't run all of them. It's true. But he's still, he you, can still get like, an argument where you're like, yeah, you could just play two arcane research for the brain damage on Pete. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. You, you could even, I guess. You wouldn't. But like, I mean, like, unless you were. If I was going to, like, the last turn of a campaign and I had died the one before and I was picking up Pete, yeah. like, I yeah, would think. Like, I might. Yeah. 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 Just to, like, be able to go. Patrice also is much better with the skills than Pete because she has. A built-in draw engine. Yes, that is this true. Is true. Yeah, yeah. But I, I definitely respect that. I think it's a personal opinion mm-hmm. on that. I don't think that one is strictly better than the other. Who knows? Maybe someone in the comment will be like, "Here's the evidence for why you guys are all wrong." <laughs> for I, all I think the reason you two are also math. Math. Yeah. Duke is like, just he's been here longer. Yeah, and you know he's good for longer. Whereas Patrice. The desperate build has only come out recently mm-hmm. for our group. Yeah, but. the thing that also gets me with Patrice is because, like, I can just see situations where you draw the cards that you just can't do anything to do with, and, like, yeah, it's you, you can just do other things, but then you just, like, I just, it's just too much of, like, you less control. There, there is, uh, just by no, like a bigger variable. I definitely, there. I definitely believe that. That's like, a, again, that's a personal preference mm-hmm. thing. Like, I just, I play Patrice good. Bren probably plays Patrice bad. It's just how it be. <laughs> um, so I'll get a few other honorable mentions that didn't make the list. We had a group that was Agnes and Akachi, uh, Jenny Barnes, Mandy Thompson, and Skids are other honorable mentions that did not make our list, uh, the top yeah. five anyway. The Agnes and Akachi were there because five ran is a lot. You can do anything with it. Yeah. Jenny was there because... Two money is like a one hundred percent increase in playing events. That uh, events in particular that cost more money is a good way to shore up your stats. And also just versatility of deck building that she provides. Yeah, and skids skids has gotten a lot better as the green card pool has gotten significantly less trash. <laughs> um, and just have an extra action like every turn. Yeah, potentially being able to take five <laughs> actions a turn really pushes you ahead in solo. Yeah. Who's our number one? Our number one, which if you've watched our season four, is probably not too much of a surprise. It's none other than Wendy Adams. <laughs> she good, yo. Yeah. Man, I just had like some <laughs> uh, when you were when you were changing those. I just had some like who's that Pokemon flashbacks. Yeah. It's like yeah, you can you see, can the, see the, in the, the background. You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say she's I know it's not him, but. <laughs> um. I, there was something Travis said while we were making this list that, like, I, I Wendy was my number one, but just, like, what was it? You turn a 50% chance? Yeah, she turns a 50-50-10, a 50-50 test into a 75-25 test. Yeah. I just got a card. No, like, when we made this test, we were all like, Wendy's the best, right? And we were like, yeah. Wendy's our 10. Yeah, like, Wendy could be playing the game with, like, most of her deck being blank cards in solo and still be doing pretty well. Yeah. yeah. But you and don't play the game with blank cards. No, you don't. Like, Survivors, a common theme for them is interacting cards within their, with cards in their discard. And any time they print a card that supports that, Wendy gets fair. Mm-hmm. Like, a glimmer of hope from the newest, the Dreamier cycle in Wendy is just, like, damn. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. Uh, even like, like even that, that Moonstone thing, it's like not great, but playing solo with Wendy, you just get to start laughing at the game. You're like, I've got five brain. What can yeah, you like, do? For I most other red hat scares, Glimmer yeah. of Hope in particular is like you can pay one to add um an unexpected courage, sometimes unexpected courage plus to your hand. But for Wendy, you're just like, I get to retake two or three tests for yeah. a single yeah, resource. For like, like one resource. Insane. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's also like, probably pretty solid for mid. Yeah. Where you can just yeah. commit them for like an, a, as unexpected courage. No, no, you're right. 
That's not what we're here to discuss. But, but yeah. Like, no, Wendy Adams is just like, damn. Yeah, she has a great stat line. She has access to uh, cards that just play so well with what she's doing. And as always, if the cards, even if her cards were blank, as Bryn always says, she's still killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like the only the only part of the game that she really suffers at is uh, like any any of the you end up against an act that says when this enemy is defeated, advance. Mm -hmm. You're you're in like a little bit of trouble, but you you've got workarounds, right? Like you don't actually need your combat to be done through punch. And, and then usually there's also can, uh, like the book way of getting through that as well. Especially yeah. if you yeah. know that it's coming, you can plan around it with things like sneak attack and backstab. Yeah, yeah. and I, even even like fire axe, like. Oh yeah, no, like you can just you're like, like hey, you've, check got, you've, got, you've got choices. And resources, I start chopping this guy down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like seven is still like. This this a lot of punch. It's a it's a crazy amount. It's very good. So, like Wendy just has like, she gets access to insane cards, between green and red. Her ability is, like, probably the best investigator ability in the game. Mm -hmm. And then she and also uh, she doesn't has, have any wasted uh, stat points. Same stat line. Yeah, because she has no wasted stat points, right? Like, yeah, she doesn't need anything more than one in her fight, and because of that, she's that much better. And then only, she only has a one fight because they were like, "Well, we can't just give her a zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so those were our top five strongest solo investigators. As I said at the beginning, we haven't played a lot of solo. Um, and as we learned, Bryn plays with just Will Yorick for solo. Yeah, pretty um, much. <laughs> the extent of our, uh, our experience in the past couple of years. So if you guys have any thoughts about solo Arkham, let us know in the comments below because, um, I imagine in two years, if we're still doing this content, which we probably will because the game ain't going anywhere, we'll revisit this list with some hopefully some new investigators and some new thought process to come with it. Um, thanks for, for watching. Worth, like, don't let us, uh, I mean, this is my opinion, not your guys, not representing you two on this, but uh, play the game with more than one investigator. I think it's a lot more fun. You know, I also would rather play two-handed um myself yeah but like having played a little bit of solo solo arkham i would just rather play myself playing two investigators yeah it's one of those things that solo is also just like it's it's a whole different beast you have to approach the game completely differently um yeah but not stopping you from playing solo but we i do recommend if you're just starting out arkham uh, and you're playing solo play two-handed solo it's just better, oh, yeah. for, in my opinion, for new players. You don't want to start solo. It'll really sour you on the game, I think. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for list videos for us to do in the future, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you got this far, why don't you smash that like button uh, and tell the YouTube algorithm more Arkham Horror content. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one, and as always, GG's.